This is an enduro bike. That is a lot in the row at night. Three in a row. Oh well. Yeah, this one's not for full... It, well, it's kind of cross-country. It's It was fun. It was definitely fun. But I think the, th the main thing was it just ate everything. It, it felt like the correct tool for the job, almost. It was like probably just a little bit underbiked. My uncle did give it to me on purpose. He was like, I'm taking the better bike. And I was like, that's fine. <laughs> thing fucking sends. Right, let's go. The brand new souped up bicycle. Biker cycle mobile. Now with textures all over it. Rather than missing a few. In the Martens. This car Turbo, I hope you're still watching. Uh, history lesson here. This car is based off of the Mar uh, the Maltini, not Martini, the Maltini car uh, of Eddie Merckx during the most successful parts of his career. Five-time Tour de France champion, greatest cyclist, road cyclist in the men's division of all time. Um, they actually drove not quite this car but the one between the, the 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 brick that was between the turbo brick that we have here and the group 3 one and so when i realized i could drive this car and could make an homage livery for this this is the this is the inception of my idea that Biker Cycle is a bunch of mechanics who took their cars and went rallying. This is it. This is the inception of that. Because I realised I could make this car. I've then got my Group 2 Esky, which is the Holden's uh, British Racing Division car, because I fucking love those bikes. Not Holden's. Holden's are, are fucking Australian, <laughs> Australian cars. Um, uh, fuck. Holdworths. Yep, tree. Holdworths. Because I love that bike. I don't know what it is, but the orange and light blue. Beautiful, beautiful livery on bikes. And they still make them, but they make some awful designed carbon frames now. I don't really like the look of them. So, uh, yeah. But that's the Martini. It's Martens because at the time a friend of mine was sending me loads of pictures of squirrel-like things that are called Martens. It says Marten rather than Martens at the top of the, um, on the top up there, top of the windscreen, because I'm an idiot. Uh, and it's baked in now and I couldn't be asked to change it yesterday, so it's fine. So yeah, if you look up the Maltini, M-O-L-T-E-N-I, Maltini Arcor cycling team. With Eddie Merckx. During the late 60s and early 70s, absolutely dominant team. And the weird thing is, with the amount of... So Merckx was a three-time world champion, but... I hardly, s you hardly see pictures of him in the World Champions kit. I think there's a bit of like selectivity bias there because all of the pictures are in black and white. The World Champions kit has a rainbow band, like the Olympic rainbow rather than the gay pride rainbow. Um, but because it's black and white, it doesn't stand out as much. And the Maltini kit does 
it stands out so much versus the kits of the time. I don't know what it is. I yeah. It really is a kit that actually stands out on black and white television. It stands out versus the rest of the kits. And it does that partially by just having the name emblazoned massive across the back. But it does, it is a fantastic kit. I was actually surprised, it wasn't that long ago that I basically realised, hold on, how many times did Eddie Merckx win the World Championships? Like, he won it three times? And yet you barely see him in the kit? You barely think of him as a, like, I barely think of him at least as, as a World Champion, but... I mean, the fact is, Merck's won that fucking much. So there's three things. If you if you think of tennis, you've got the three Grand Slams. Wimbledon, Australian Open, French Open. You've got those three. In cycling, we have Tour de France, Giro d'Italia, Volta a España. Merck's won the Giro five times. He won the Tour five times. He won the Vuelta once. The Vuelta a España is not on his cycling stats page. Why? Because it is not in the top 25 or however many things they can fit in the highlights part. Winning a Grand Tour is not one of the most impressive things that this man has done. That is how dominant and how incredible of a rider he was. Ignoring the doping, because everyone was on it. But he was absolutely head and shoulders above. To put it into downhill terms... Rachel Atherton, really, in terms of dominance, she won everything. And still is winning everything. She's... Like, Rachel Atherton before the sabbatical to have a kid. Because I, I w I'd like to say Greg Minar, but the thing is, Merck's kind of just dipped without losing... You know, Minar's been doing it for ages while being kind of average for a World Cup racer, of course. Still, you know, he's only in the... T it is one of those things where you're saying Greg Minar is only in the top 10 he's only top 15 he still is top 15 but yeah it you know he's Merckx was at the top and then retired while he was still at the top realistically he, f he had a bit of a fall off over the last two years but he didn't have a long time where he wasn't winning anything particularly uh, where Menar obviously has done And you can't really compare him to Minar because he just didn't go that long. You know, Valverde is closer to Minar. Valverde winning everything when he was younger. Then had a two-year doping suspension. But we'll ignore that because Greg didn't have one. Um, but going for long, long periods of time. Starting with both starting when they were really young and still going. And uh, Valverde's retired from pro road racing, but he's doing gravel now. Still going at like 42. I think he's I think he's either the same age or one year younger or older than Minar. You know. I can't think of anybody in road cycling who's like Steve Pete particularly. Someone who be became a mentor having been an absolute legend of the sport, then goes and becomes a mentor. So, P.E. Dunno. Can't think of anyone, but road cycling teams are a bit weird because you don't always know who's at the... who's... who's gone where and who's working with who in the background, particularly. So, you know, but, well, but, uh, Alberto Contador's doing it now with a team, but the, that team hasn't had much success. There's very few, like, won the Tour de France, 
then won the Tour de France as a uh, team manager. Maybe Alexander Vinokurov is the closest, being a successful team manager and a successful racer, but definitely not to the level of World Championship Steve Peat racing and managing. And then, of course, there is the greatest mountain biker of all time. Bar none. Argument of whether he's the greatest cyclist of all time, but definitely the greatest mountain biker. I would argue that he is the greatest mountain biker. All fields. And that would have to be Nino Scherter. The only argument you could have about it would be someone like... Caroline Chusson. Fuck, I've forgotten her name. Um, German lady. German, mostly downhiller, but from the era where everybody raced XC as well. Or someone like John Tomac, winning downhill and cross country. They're the only real people that I could see. But, I mean... A flawless season winning every World Cup and Cape Epic and World Championships. That's insane. Only one other person's done that and that's um, Rachel Atherton in the women's downhill. Didn't win the Cape Epic because it doesn't exist but she did win. Um, I looked it up in the same year that she won that she won another thing. I can't remember what it was. She did. She won World Championships and all of the World Cups. And one major tournament that's not the World Cups. Um, so she effectively, same sort of thing, same level as the Cape Epic. But then, I mean, Nino, he's still in with a fight now. He came. Th the fact is, the thing that makes Nino the greatest of all time is the fact that in 2020, people said, oh, he's having a shit season. There was only a couple of races, because obviously it was 2020, end of the year. And people said, oh, Nino's done. He's done. Covid's ruined him. He's done. The fucker came fourth in the overall. He, was, he wasn't off the podium. Top five podium, admittedly, but technically on the podium every race that year. And he came fourth in the overall and everyone's calling him washed up. He had an absolute dog shit race the first race of this year. Don't know what happened last race, didn't watch it. The commentator's just dog shit uh, for the mountain biking at the minute. Not happy with it. Um, yeah. But he's still there, still doing all right. Maybe not the best, but I think he's realised now. Maybe you know he still he won the World Cup overall last year, and people said he had a bad year, but yet he still won it. It was close, but he won it. Will he win it this year? It's going to be tough, you know. His first race last year. He had a super challenging start to his first race last year. He um, had some terrible mechanical luck and was still able to fight back and come third or fourth, I think it was. Uh, this year, he didn't have any mechanical bad luck, just didn't have a good race. And it's sad. But the thing is, he has said... He will not stop racing until he stops enjoying the training and enjoying the racing. So we'll see. He has made some illusions that it may be his last chance. But 
most of those are his last chance to do something big, like win. Not his last chance to ride in front of people. But his last chance to win stuff. The fact is, if he wins the Olympics this year, he will retire. I can almost guarantee it. If he wins the Olympics this year, he'll say, fuck it, I'm gone. Because if he wins the Olympics, there is nobody with anything better than him. Because he'll have two Olympic gold medals. Meaning, Absalom, not quite there. But the man's fucking insane. Absolutely. Like, I just want him to win that. Like, there's there's two things I want to happen this year. Number one, Mark Cavendish, Tour de France, number 35. Number two, Nino Scherter, Olympic Games. They are the two big cycling events that I really, really hope happen. Because the Olympics only come around once every four years and like f Nino's insane but chances of him winning Olympics in four years unfucking likely It's not going to happen this cat face and it because of doing this mostly and I don't know about next cat face depends when that happens and whether XDWC or any defrag things overlap with it I would really like to get my name on that uh, hall of fame of rally first seconds and thirds get a podium like it's a long shot it's for sure a long shot but it'd be super cool but I don't think it's gonna happen this cat face slam so far off the pace just everywhere and if I'm gonna grind out Art of Rally I'm gonna be grinding out this once I've done this then we can get into actually grinding things oh, fuck off Yeah, it is only likely to happen. I, I would probably need two out of five rain stages. Just to piss off some of the better players. Who hate rain. So that they could... Uh, not grind it as much. Then just hoard my time. It would be hilarious to stream and hoard my time, but no one actually watches this. It's always quite funny when I stream, 
because people get more you get more people in a voice chat watching someone stream the game than you do th than like I ever get viewers here and quite often I've been streaming something like Xenotic and I've had more in-game spectators on the server than I've had people watching the stream for real I've had it in tournaments as well I've had five viewers in a tournament and ten people in spectate on the server Like, am I really that annoying? Surely, surely. I'm trying to decide whether to do four tracks today. Smash out one after this. Uh, wet Sardinia. I worked out that if I did two a day, it's 32 days to finish. That that is the one the one time I am probably going to spam the shit out of my link everywhere is the the final the final run because if I I just know that I will be so sad if I'm here on my own fucking doing the final one. Like if I'm just sat here talking to myself for the final set of tracks, you know, yeah it's going to be wet Australia so I'm probably not going to have a clue where the fuck I'm driving. Wet Australia in Group A. But I should have a hang of the car because there's not too many cars in Group A. So I'll be, uh, yeah. Something that I know I'm gonna like that's really been a challenge and doing that and there's no fucker watching. Oh yeah, I, I mean, that's the sort of shit where I'll just say bollocks to it. I don't even care about crossing community borders. I'm posting it everywhere. I'm posting it in, uh, in all the other communities. Like, I'll post it in Xenotic for fuck's sake. I don't care. I've been around there long enough. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, you guys like rally? Yeah, just going everywhere. Posting it in Virtual's Twitch chat. So, uh, you guys like when Virtual plays the Art of Rally music? Fucking come play the game then. I'm still surprised. So, uh, well, slightly annoyed, but also surprised that Virtual hasn't played Art of Rally yet. Because he uses the soundtrack, and when people have asked about it, he has multiple times, I've been in the stream multiple times, where he's said, oh, it's cool, really cool rally game, you know, time trials, like Trackmania. You know, he's given a shout out to the game, but he's never played it on stream. And it's like, come on, dude! So many people have said to me, oh, this game's like quite like Trackmania. Like, it's fuck all like Trackmania in quite a lot. Uh, yeah, he's played a few games other than Trackmania. Um, he's he's done a couple of sponsored kart racer type streams. Uh, I don't know if you know Zeitgeist, where you build tracks very similar to Trackmania, but you don't have an engine. It's like just getting dropped in played that. He played, I think he played Hot Wheels Unleashed. I think he got a sponsorship to play Hot Wheels Unleashed. He's had a couple of kart racer, uh, racing, they're all racing type game sponsorships. I don't know if he's played anything outside of us. I believe he's played stuff outside of a sponsorship before. But I can't think of anything. Oh yeah, Jimmer played Art of Rally. He's a, Jim has actually said the reason he doesn't play Art of Rally very often is because he quite often doesn't have a regular controller plugged into his computer apparently. Because he plays so many sim games, his controller is quite often either out of charge or not plugged in or not set up or whatever. But yeah, he enjoyed Rat Art of Rally. But at the same time, his his involvement in Rally is always really difficult to complete stages and trying to do it clean without crashing. Art of Rally doesn't really have that. Once you actually know what you're doing and you can drive, you can get through everything pretty quick without crashing whereas something like WRC smacking all of the assists off and putting all of the damage on high and all of that and then trying to beat master AI on a 25 kilometer stage oh hell yeah he played Nordschleifer but that's the thing he I think he really likes challenge runs uh, that's the strange thing with watching him play, because he plays, his main thing is like head-to-head -head racing of course, but the thing that he, he seems to really have the most fun making, whenever I watch his videos, the thing that he seems to have the most fun making videos with is challenge runs. Like, and it's so funny to see that, because I think he would really enjoy something like uh, defrag or 
if he could get into the movement, because he's a car guy. I mean, he like he's a car guy. That's the thing. That's the other thing. I play this because it's a speedrun game, because it's time trials, because it's difficult. I'm not into cars. I'm into going fast. But if Jimmy could get into defrag or that sort of thing or CS surf. I think you'd really enjoy some of the difficult to rip stages in those games. Really like challenging things that take you a long time to to pull off. It's one of those things that he I see it when he does those videos. He has to find that balance of it's it's got to be doable within a reasonable amount of time for him to produce the video, but it's also got to be difficult enough to be worth producing a video about. So Art of Rally is a shit video because it's not a difficult, you know, it's something that anyone could jump into and play, and that's the point. Without assists, you know, with all, all the assists off and everything. You have to purposefully hamper yourself to make it difficult. Like playing the logging truck or something daft. But it's fairly simple, fairly short, fairly straightforward for the. And certainly too much so for all shit. For the sort of things that he wants to do. But then he can't do super, super difficult things that are going to take him more than one day. Or that he's not going to. You're not going to be able to see that he's got through. Like, he probably needs to be able, with those sort of challenge videos, he probably needs to be able to pump them out in three hours recording time or something like that. That would be an amazing video. Can I beat the Group A world record in a logging truck? I mean, the answer is no. But, hey. I wonder what handicap you'd have to give yourself. Because I have seen, have seen videos where people have played with alternate control styles, um, and the challenge was, I think I saw one in Trackmania by I can't remember who, but they used they always used a gamepad, like a controller, um, and they moved over to wheel. And the idea was, if I set a time on a track that, I think that it was a track that they vaguely knew, but hadn't hunted, but it was, I've got one shot to set a time on this track. That's it. And I do that with a gamepad. How long will it take for me to go faster with the wheel? To learn how to use the wheel from fresh how long is it going to take to beat that first gamepad time on that track? And I think that's really cool. That's a cool idea. I mean, in Mario Kart you could do it. Um, set a time with a real controller and then how long would it take me to beat that time with motion controls? Yeah. I used to play keyboard actually for a while, but I just <sighs> controller was just better. The reason I was trying keyboard was because I'm actually better at a different game called Drag, which is very, very now called um, Rip Out to Zones, I think, or something. Um, the devs are now in with the iRacing people because they made an incredible physics engine. But basically, that game, I'm faster with a keyboard. No matter how much time and practice I put in with a controller, I always seem to be faster with a keyboard. And I think it's because in that game, I think keyboard is actually better, unless they've changed the physics since. When you tap with a keyboard, you turn the same amount without losing traction. Whereas if you just gently hold your controller, you slide out, unlike in AOR, where you don't. But in that, you gently slide out. You lose grip. 
whereas tapping, you can keep all your grip while still turning. But I don't know. I mean, I started playing Art of Rally with a controller, that was what I learned to do it on, and I think 9 times out of 10 I'm better with whatever I learned to play the game on. Whatever I first played the game on, I have have to kind of stick with. Though I did play long enough with Trackmania to make the controller basically the same. Yeah, Trackmania is a weird one. Well, the newest game, 2020, very much is controller. Like, keyboard is really dying now. And people are even moving more towards, like, wheel is the absolute superior method because of the minute controls you can get out of it. And the fact that you can just quite easily have the D-pad on the wheel, because most wheels have a D-pad on them, so that you can navigate menus. So you can bind that D-pad to still control your car in the same way that you can in, Art of Ra in um, a controller. You can use the D-pad as well as the sticks. Which means that if you need that super fast switching, which most people don't need on a controller because you can go very quickly side to side, but a wheel it is really difficult if you've got to do left, right, left, right very quickly. But you can just have the D-pad. And instantly switch between the methods. So... But yeah, yeah, you can still get very far. It is really the pinnacle of the top that it matters. Keyboard players. Cheers, Turbo. Nice one. Oh, wait, let me write this down before I can move on. 31, 24, 152. 